Welcome to Escuela del Sur. In this amazing podcast, as Coaches of the World, we are here with Arturo Padilla. Welcome, Arturo. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be part of this uh, podcast one more time. And thank you for your invitation. No, I, I'm so glad you upset because this is the second one. Uh, we had an interview in Spanish uh, from the Latin American coaches. So we thought maybe it's not a bad idea to share the same uh, ideas in English for the, all the community in U.S. and all the world. Sounds good. I think there is a lot of um, good things that we can share with everybody around the world. So it will be good. Amazing. So explain us uh, who you are. Okay. Well, as you say, my name is Arturo Padilla. I'm from Panama. Um I have been doing gymnastics my whole life. Gymnastics has been my life since I remember. Um, I was part of the national uh, team in Panama as a gymnast. Then I started coaching um, in a small club in Panama, Club Marbella. And we started um, developing a lot of like good athletes there, but we, our gym didn't have the equipment or the facilities to provide them with a good environment for like harder skills. So and one of the things that I will that I love to do was learning. I always love to learn and I was trying to keep learning and learning and learning more. So yeah, that's that's me and that's how I become coach. Because I, I love gymnastics and yeah. So in, in Panama, you make your primary like a coach, artistic gymnastic coach, you make this example. Um and later you take the decisions for Gomo Forward and you went to Costa Rica. Yes. Because um as I told you before, uh we didn't have um the facilities, the equipment, and I felt at some point that I was getting stuck in the same place, not learning anymore. And I really wanted to grow farther with my career as a coach. Um, I moved to Costa Rica to work in Club Carbonell with uh, two Cuban coaches that I met long, long time ago. Um, they offered me a position there and I started working with, the, with some um, athletes uh, around eight, nine years old. And then we started producing good uh, quality of gymnastics, something that at that moment in Costa Rica, they didn't have like a good program. And I started working as hard as I can mm -hmm. to learn. I am really honored that I have the opportunity to ask some of uh some friends to for advices um that I took the uh FIG academies and I met some people like Flavio Bessi and Lily Ortiz and so many other coaches that we got together and have the opportunity to share ideas and to I think build up our knowledge in gymnastics. Um in that way, every time that I was like, oh, I want to teach this, but I don't know how to do it, or I don't know if what I'm doing is right, I used to send videos to Flavio or send videos to Lily, and they were like, okay, you should be doing this, maybe do this, maybe try this. Even with the lesson plans, the conditioning, the planning. So it was, it was a good way for me to keep learning and improving and growing in my career. So the academies gave you a lot of uh, ideas, experience, knowledge, networking, and later you start to go on and understand, maybe I'm ready for international competitions. Yes. I think the, the most important part from the academy, it was the networking. Because those, per, those people that I met back in 2007, they are still part of my life. They are still, I can call them friends. And we still have a good relationship. And, and sometimes we met, like I saw Flavio, last time that I saw him was in 2019 in the World Championships in Stuttgart, Germany. 
um yeah so it's like you still have that people that is a good part of your life and they are will they will be there forever so i think that was the most important part of the fig academies and and later you you make in costa rica your like university sec, uh, secondary and university like artistic gymnastic coach so yeah. tell me about this uh, experience in a first world uh, world cup when was this uh, canadian coach with you yeah uh well that was that was um a really that was a, a, a part of in my life that changed like my my mentality and all of that because i was a big fan of gymnastics my whole life so when i i was dreaming of going to a world championship i was dreaming to go into the olympics i was dreaming to see all those famous gymnasts in person and one day back in 2011 that dreams came true so we traveled to japan to the world championships and um, that was one of my first international experience on that stage in a war stage um i remember going like out for the competition and we have to walk from the warm-up gym to the arena where you are gonna compete and my athlete was for some bars so i was walking out to prepare the bar and get the bar ready for her to warm up and get ready to compete and when i walk out of the tunnel the tunnel and i saw the the gym that for me was like oh lord i don't think that i belong here i think this is way too much for me i uh, i have been dreaming with this moment but i don't think that i'm ready for this and this uh canadian coach that rotated with us he approached me and he was like are you okay i was like I think I don't belong to this place. I think there are too many world coaches and, and the amazing gymnast here, and I don't think that this is my place. And he was like, but listen, where are you right now? And I was like, I'm in a world championship. And he was like, well, that means that you are a world coach too. So get out there and enjoy what you're doing because you deserve to be here. You're not any less than anybody else. So that for me was inspirational, changed my mind and makes me feel that if you work hard, your dreams come true and you are good enough to do it. So incredible how the imposter syndrome Uh, is looking for everyone in gymnastics, so perfectionist profile of coaches, also gymnasts. And when you are in the situation, you think, ah, maybe I am not, I am not ready. <laughs> maybe I need to practice more. I need to learn more. I need to have more experience. I am not ready. But who you will, how you will be ready if you never give the first steps. So it's the beginning of everyone. Yeah, I think that that's important to know as a coaches. Because sometimes we are a little bit too hard with ourselves and we want to be perfect. We want our athlete to go out there and show everybody that we have been working so hard and that we are capable of doing good gymnastics. But at the end, we are doing this for the athletes. And that's something that, I, that came to my mind in that moment is if I feel this way right now, being here, I cannot imagine the way that my athlete feel going to her first world championship and have to perform in that arena with that many people standing there. It, it, it's crazy, but sometimes our ego is a little bit bigger than what we think. And it's all about us as a coaches and we have to prove that we are good enough and we have to prove that we are the best and we have to prove a lot of things. And, and you know what? There is nothing to prove. Nothing to prove. You are who you are. Um, first, you're a human being and we are, we are fine if we make mistakes we learn from those mistakes and we grow from those mistakes. I think that's something that 
as a coaches, sometimes we forget. And I don't know if we forget it or it's, we don't have anybody to tell us that we have to make mistakes. And it, it is really hard because you have the pressure from the federation, you have the pressure from the parents, you have the pressure from other coaches, you have the pressure from the same from the gymnasts. So it's it's a lot to handle as a coach. And as a new coach and as a young coach, it's really hard to to see that, to see the big picture because you feel the pressure, but you don't wanna give up. Yeah. So uh, and also you explain to me about the ego sometimes is have a balance. I feel like Everybody has an ego. That's normal. We all want to do good and we all want to show that we are good enough. But for me, I don't know. It's, I know that I'm good enough. I don't, I, I don't want to take that on my athletes. But we are here to provide tools to our athletes for them to fulfill their dreams. It's not about our dreams. It's about them. We are just here to to help them. And sometimes we forget about that. Um, it's all about us. And I think that's for me when it becomes a problem. When you cannot handle that part of your ego and you don't understand that, yes, you're, you're working really hard, but the one that has to show up and be the best is the athlete that everything that we have been doing and everything that we are doing and that we are willing to do is for the athletes, not for our egos. Yes, it's amazing because now with all the things with the social media and all the, that we, we talked before about this uh, immersion, we are in the virtual reality, everything looks good, but we never uh, figure out how, how feel the gymnasts with this sometimes from us like a coaches and what I take from this conversation was you also need a little bit ego for move yourself like a coach but but never forget about it it's, it's all about the gymnast it's not about us but I yeah. I, I remember this where you tell, tell me about have a balance because also we have we want recognition we we don't want to do a free work it's not free. We it's our profession, uh, yeah. but and we I have think, a balance. I think we deserve the recognition too because we have been working hard too, and sometimes we sacrifice a lot of things. Family process, time, family time, money because we all know that working as a coach in gymnastic, you're not gonna be a millionaire, and sometimes you spend a lot. Sometimes in our countries. You are the one that put the money to travel with your athletes. Sometimes you are the one that has to pay for the athletes' food or pay for the athletes uh, um, where they are going to stay or pay for a lot of things out of your pocket. So you sacrifice a lot of things. So I think we deserve that recognition. But at the end of the day, if that recognition is not there, you're still doing what you love and the athletes are working as hard as you and they are the ones performing so when you when the athlete is competing you have no control of what they are going to do you already did your job so no matter what happened you did what you were capable of at that moment and now it's their time and there is at least I don't know any athlete that they wants to go out there and compete and do poorly. They all want to go out there and show up and do their best. And um, if they have a bad day and we keep telling them that it wasn't the best, we are not helping them. Yes, they know that it wasn't the best. They know that. Now, what we are going to do to make it better for the next time. I think that's our job as a coaches. Now, I think society is a little bit hard and different now with what you say with the social media, because everything that we see in social media is perfection, or at least that's what the fake news on social media show us. 
perfection. But this is why we have a lot of kids now, a lot of athletes in young stage dealing with anxiety. We want to make a special announcement. We have new sponsor from FVQ's 3D Gym, an app developed from Wales and France, where you can find three apps, 3D Gym Woman, 3D Gym Men, and Trampoline. All information is available on Instagram and also on the website, fbcubes.com. We also want to thank eGymnastic from Germany by Flavio Bessi, where you can find all the information about their new educational platform learning, gymnastic courses for all the coaches around the world. Thank you very much. Because they don't know how to deal with problems. They don't know how to deal with these kind of things with failure with challenge challenge yes i, I agree a hundred percent is is so hard because now they have to show the social media that they are perfect not that they are good enough but they are they have to be perfect and and everybody is now following them or it is crazy how times has changed and the pressure that the athletes and everybody else feels because sometimes you you post a video of your athletes doing something and they go to the meet and they don't do it the way that they did it in the video and everybody's like oh well they are not that good no maybe they are but today wasn't the, a good day everybody has those days but i think is is so easy now with uh social media to judge everybody and it, it is crazy it is really crazy to handle that pressure so it's the first time we talk in all the interviews about this topic and i think us is very strong about this uh, society pressure society about your succeed uh maybe something we can go forward and forward with more comments about it but it's something we need to take attention and more special the parents uh because it's whole the expectation is whole looking from outside and uh, the instagram the scholarship the the university they will apply yeah, and and this is everything what we see in instagram and, and yes in tiktok in gymnastics it's a lot like for me that i work here in the U.S. with this system, sometimes I wonder, like, why they do gymnastics? They really love gymnastics or they are doing it because they are expecting to get something in return from the year that they have been doing gymnastics. And I came to the realization that sometimes they are expecting to get a scholarship, but they don't understand. And when I say they... I include parents and athletes. Sometimes they don't understand what it takes to get a scholarship. They think that because they are coming to the gym every day and they are doing gymnastics and the parents, because they are paying, my athlete is going to get a scholarship. And that's it. And sometimes you ask the athletes, do you want a scholarship? Yes, I want to go to Utah. I want to go to UCLA. I want to go to Florida. I want to go to this. Have you seen their gymnastic program? The other part is what you want to do when you go to college. Because at the end of the day, gymnastics is going to be over at some point and you have to be a professional. You have to have a career. They don't know what career they want because for them, in their mind, it's all about the gymnastic program. And that for me is like, but what is going to happen after you retire, after those four years of doing gymnastics in college are over, what are you going to do? Because you have to go out there and work and have a real life, like a real person now. And and I think that's something that the systems in here in the US and maybe in in every other country around the world fails to the athletes because it's the same for the athletes that they are working so hard to go to the Olympics. And after they go to the Olympics, what's going to happen? Usually we have athletes at 18, 19, working so hard to go to the Olympics that they postpone to go to the college. And what happened? 
if they go to the Olympic after that, what, what's going to happen? Or if they don't go, who prepared those athletes to have a normal life after retirement? And, and we forget about that, that yes, they are athletes and they have been putting their life in this, but at the same time, they are human beings and they need to be able to be out there and function like a normal person. So in this point is connected about your philosophy. If you can mention to us, what is the two philosophies like a coach you have? Well, one of them is um, that I don't like to run. Don't run because you have to build. It's like a building a uh, building. So if the basics are good, you can put another floor on top and put another floor on top. And that building is going to be the bigger building that you can build. But if the basics are not good, the foundations are not good, and you keep putting another floor and another floor, at some point that building is going to collapse and it's going to fall. So focus on the on the foundation. Focus on the basics. Don't run. Don't try to... to Prove anybody that you are capable of doing something because it's not about you. It's about the athletes. And sometimes we are running so fast with those athletes to do so much more that that's when fear start hitting pretty hard. So don't, don't run. And the second one that is my, uh, this is my personal philosophy is I love gymnastics. I choose to be a coach, but above all of that, I'm a human being. I'm allowed to make mistakes. I'm allowed to have a normal life. And I'm allowed to be a human. And, and sometimes we forget about that because we have the pressure from the parents. We have the pressure from the James, we have depression from the kids. We have a lot of pressure. And we want to prove that that we are capable of running the program and doing gymnastics the way that everybody is expecting us to do. And sometimes when we go back home, that frustration come out. And it's hard because who, who deal with the coaches? We deal with the athletes. We work with them and we try to to um, do the best for them. But who does that for us? Who really cares for the coaches? Usually nobody. There are a few, few persons that come to you and say, hey, you did a good job. Or don't worry. It's going to be okay. And sometimes those persons are your family. For the people in the gym, if you if the athlete win, is because she's amazing and she got the talent and she is the best. But if she doesn't, you're a bad coach. And that's the way that it is. Sometimes you have to learn to to love yourself. And know that you're not in control of what other people think about you. If you are doing your best, that's enough. And as a coach, I think this is really important to understand. We are human beings. We are human beings and we deserve to have a life outside the gym as a normal person. Not everything can be gymnastic because then you start getting burnt out and it's really hard sometimes when you lose that love for what you have been doing it is is really hard so this is something we'll be talking at the end like advices for coaches and gymnasts is something very important um about we are human being so don't forget about that because admin work, gymnastic routines, uh, physical condition and gymnasts deserve the respect. So many things around and the carpet and the club 
uh, but we never we didn't we sometimes we forget we are human beings parents also that's that's one of the biggest part the parents like uh when you start working with the gymnast when, with the little one this is a team work because the parents are the one that has to bring the kids to the gym every day uh, they put the trust in you to build the foundations and provide every single tool for the athlete to start developing and growing as a, as a gymnast. But sometimes their expectations are a little bit higher than the reality. And that's when it becomes a problem. When the parents are overly involved, athlete's career, that's when it becomes a problem. Because at some point, it's their gymnastic career. They need to make the decision. They need to, every single day, they need to take decisions. If they want to come to the gym, if they are going to try their best, if they are going to work harder, that's out of control of anybody. But sometimes the parents forget about that and they want, oh, my uh, my daughter has to do it. My daughter has to do it. My daughter has to do it. She's afraid or uh, she doesn't want to do it. Do you have talked to her about it? Do you know what your daughter really wants to do it? Because sometimes we put in their brains the idea that they need or they want to get a scholarship. And sometimes they don't really want that. That's something that we create for them. Yeah, they want to be with their friends. They want to be with the group. They want to go for the place they can flip. Uh, they want to have fun. <laughs> Sometimes the kids, they just, they want that, but the for gymnastics is in a specific sport when everything begin, uh, begin early. Um, yes, you see juniors competitions, the girls, they are very mature, but they are, I don't know, 11, 12 years old, traveling and, and having a lot of pressure in this gymnastic world. So parents is one of the important uh, part of this uh, triangle, like coach and gymnast and yeah. And, and and the family, the family is so important for the gymnast for perform and have the support and also the more important about the values because coaches, sometimes we try to do our best, but the, in the beginning of the respect, it start from home. You, you are a parent, so you, you, you can understand that. Um, so Arturo, who is this U.S. Uh, environment like a coach? Who was your beginning to jump from Costa Rica to U.S.? What city you start? What club you start to work? And who is your present now in this gymnastics in US? Well, I was um 2016, I was coaching in Bolivia in one Pan American Championships. And Christy Phillips, one of the most amazing athletes from back in the 80s, was there as a judge from the US. And she was friend of one of my friends, and then she told my friend that she wants, she was looking for a coach. And then my friend talked to her about me and then she came to me and, and offered me the position. And at the beginning, I didn't want to accept it because I was working so hard to build my office in Costa Rica. And it was a, like, no, I, I got a long pl long term plan in Costa Rica to keep those habits for at least the next cycle and all of this. And if I go now, it, it's, it's over. I need to start over from, from scratch. So, well, my wife was like, yeah, we are moving. So we took the decision to move to uh, North Carolina to work at KPAC. Uh, so I have been working here for almost six to seven years already. Uh, it was um, a learning in progress for me because it was it was a different environment for sure. You know, in our countries, we don't offer a scholarship for the Alice to do gymnastics or anything, any kind of sport. It's really hard. It's, 
or you're a professional athlete or you just do it because you love it. And when I came here, I was expecting everybody to want to do gymnastic, to do a late gymnastic, and that wasn't the reality. Everybody wants to get a scholarship or and that's what they were looking for. And it was a different system. Uh, then that's when I moved here, that's when everything that happened with the doctor from the US, from Larry Nassar, like blow up and then it became it becomes really difficult to start coaching here because a lot of um coaches were afraid to say anything to the athletes because it was it was hard everything that if they don't like it they will say oh this coach is abusing me or something like that so it, it was really hard to the point that I think now is getting a little bit better on that situation, but it, it was, it was extremely hard and, and crazy because sometimes like I remember uh, listening to some parents with athletes that have a couple of injuries and they were like, I think it's time for this athlete to be done. And the parents were so worried about my athlete getting a scholarship. And that was the only thing that happened to their brain is my daughter needs to get a scholarship. I was like, but your daughter is 13 years old dealing with this many injuries. Do you think that is worth it? And then you read the newspaper and it was like, okay, uh, the coach made me compete on a broken arm. No, wait, did really the coach make you compete with a broken arm? Because if you have a broken arm, your parents knows about that. And I don't think that the coach made you compete on that if the parents didn't allow you to go to the gym with a broken arm. But all the blame was put on the coaches. And so it, it was really hard. It was it was crazy, crazy time for that. Um I I have been learning a lot. It's a it's a crazy system here because you have uh, uh, different techniques. You have people coming from China, people coming from Russia, people coming from Romania, people from everywhere working in the US. So Technique wise here, you will find whatever you need. The best from the Russian, the best from China, the best from Romania, because everybody's doing good quality. So it just, for me, it was just the, the expectations, the expectations that we put on the outlets. Part of the problem here or part of the problem that we have with abusing coaches and all of that is one of them is education. When you have the tools to provide the athletes with the drills and all of that to learn the skills, you don't have to be yelling or screaming or you can be demanding, but not demeaning. I think there is a different for that. Yes, we want good quality, but telling a kid, or yelling at the kid, that's not demanding quality. That's demeaning a kid.